So it's been about 24 hours since we put the glue and we weighted it down with these paint cans. Basically, we've been checking on it every so often. Good catch, huh? Right, so just by basically inspecting it, you can see that it has stuck pretty well. You can tell by the color of the glue. Needs to have bonded everywhere. My trigger mechanism still works. All right, let's take a closer look at it. All right, so here's the finished glued fill of the crossbow body and trigger mechanism. So by taking a closer look at it, you can see that the bond is pretty good across the whole body of the crossbow. Look here and all the way down as well. So now that's left for us to do, which is probably gonna be a pretty big job, is we have to start rounding all the rough edges up to make it feel more comfortable in the hand. And basically give it a more of an ergonomic grip, right here and here, make the stock more comfortable, round up each of these corners a bit, Let's get to it. So the way that we're going to start putting these bevels on the wood is I basically resorted to the grinding wheel. This is not any specific wheel. I'm just going to basically use it to just run the wood past it and give it a bevel. This will do a lot of the work for us as opposed to having to use a rasp and a file and a lot of those tools. So let's get to it. Before you start grinding, to make life easier on you, you're gonna to wanna to mark where you're gonna to grind to so you don't take off too much wood in one spot and leave one spot a little dry. So just go ahead and choose just a, a little bit for now. You don't have to go too deep. Say about that much is good. And we can go ahead and just mark that straight across of where we're going to give the bevel to. We're also going to want to do that on the flip side, right on the top. Give it about the same distance. Like that. And go ahead and just mark it. Basically what this is going to do is give you a guide of how much to take off. And you're going to want to do that all the way around, continuously around the whole body. All right, so I've basically done a rough line across the whole body, bottom, and top. And now we're going to start with the grinding. All right, so we've basically done a pretty rough, but the grinding wheel has done a lot of the work that we would have had to do by hand. Uh, we've pretty much changed the whole life of this crossbow body. Uh, we'll show you an up close of the grip. You can see it's pretty much rounded everywhere, and it feels really good in the hands. Really, really comfortable. Next job is going to be taking sandpaper and going to rub it over and over again, back and forth, until we can pretty much make it really, really clean and try to make it as smooth as possible everywhere. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to go ahead and open up our vise here, have it clamped down pretty strong. You're going to want to have two pieces of wood so you can put it in between the two clasps of your vise so you don't mark up your wood. We can go ahead and open it. Place our wood in the middle. We're going to put it right here for now. Move it down actually a little bit. Put it right where the stock of uh, the uh, grip is. Put your 
wood in between. And now tight. Tighten it down. There you go. Now you're gonna take the sandpaper and basically just you can curl it over and just start running up and down it like this to remove all these little marks and make it as smooth as possible. Alright guys, it's about 2 a.m. Um, I finished 95% of the shaping, sanding, and I think I'm going to end it for tonight. Uh, I'll give you a close-up of the stuff that I've done and what has to be done tomorrow. You can see this piece right here is what has to be done file and sand all this on the inside and that side as well but if you look on the outside you can see that everything very very smooth and I'll give you a poster for the other side as well okay so again we'll look this side tomorrow but the rest of it all very smooth. This grip I'm very happy with. It's just really, really smooth. It feels really good. Focus in. This is the day after last night where we did the majority of the sanding for the crossbow body. Uh, again, I mentioned we had those few pieces that we have to do in the stock and in the front, but after that, we'll be done. So, let's get to it. We finished all the sanding for the whole body of the crossbow. Everything is rounded off <clears throat> and really smooth give you a close-up right now you can see that the whole stock is rounded really smooth everywhere everything is rounded off the handle everything this, this grip right here and all the way up to the muzzle where the PVC goes is also rounded and smooth now it's time for the next step So as you can see here, I've drawn these lines, and what that's going to be is our notch for where our string from the crossbow is going to come back and rest in between. So here is the proportions on the trigger, as you can see it's pretty close to the end. The reason why you want it close to the end is so when you pull the trigger, 
it's going to be lifting up the string and not pushing it into that notch that you're making. Now let's cut that out. When you're gonna cut this out, keep in mind that you don't wanna have your trigger up, obviously, or even down a little bit. You wanna have it completely recessed, meaning back all the way down as possible so you don't run into your trigger while you're cutting and wreck your trigger. So as you can see, I've pretty much finished notching this out. Just a couple pointers that I want to mention to you that you should try to remember while making this notch. So let me lower you here so you can get a better view. There's an angle that I created. You can see it's like an overhang. So basically, the reason why you want this is so when the string goes in, let me put the string in for you real quick. When the string goes in to your notch, it's going to get caught into this angle that it has to overcome. So it's not going to be like a 90 degree like this back wall. It's going to have a bit of a of a inside angle. So your string gets stuck in there and you won't risk misfiring, which could be really bad. I made that angle a lot steeper. And I really want to stress to you that this is very important because you do not want to be firing that arrow when you did not press the trigger. So this notch will keep your string from escaping you. I will show you again just so you make sure you understand that you see when this string is being pulled, it's fitting underneath that notch. And it could even be a little bit more too. I would even advise you to test your notch that you made by taking your string and wrapping it around through the front. And now put some tension on it. Just basically pull each string. Then you can hold them back with one hand so you can see that your notch is working, the string is staying where it needs to be, and now you can test your trigger as well. And that's it. So the next step for our woodwork of our crossbow body will be making this little notch groove for the arrow to rest in. The reason why you want that is because you don't want your arrow rolling off while you're tilting the crossbow or just holding it you want it to be able to stay in its place pretty much and not move. So here's just the arrow wooden dowel that we bought at Lowe's. So we can pretty much get an idea of how much of a notch we're gonna have to make. You don't want it to be half a circle. You kind of want it to be just a bit under half a circle because that means that you're giving the string less of an area to hit if you make the, that notch too deep. So make it just enough for the arrow to kind of just know where its place is and stay in there but also make it so that the string has a good enough surface area to hit the back of the arrow. So let's get to it. The way that I have chosen to do this is I'm bringing back the grinding wheel. And what I'm going to do is use the edge where the wheel meets right here. And I'm going to basically use that to run the wood all the way up and make a groove. So as you can see, this is clean, there's no edge. But I'm just going to give you a little example of what I'm talking about. So you can see right there, it's maybe a groove. So basically all I use that for is to get down as much wood as possible. And then I'm going to have to finish it up by using files, sandpaper, and vice versa. So this whole Sharpie region is what I'm going to have to grind out. Let's get to it. Alright guys, I'm going to try something I'm not really familiar with. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm doing this right. But basically I have my drill press here with a bit and I'm pretty sure it's not even the right bit but basically what I want to try doing is just letting the bit run and then dragging it all the way down the barrel to try to see if I can make the groove that way I've started a little bit here and it seems to be doing a pretty good job the grinding wheel really didn't do that much because it just 
couldn't fit into this little groove here, so I want to try using this method. Let's see how that goes. Now that we've pretty much done all that we can do with this, I'm going to have to start going in by hand with some sandpaper. But I do have to admit, it's a pretty darn good idea. I'm not saying that's, you know, I'm Einstein and that's why E equals MC squared, but it did its job pretty well. Go ahead and take a look. Pretty much made that notch we were looking for all the way down. Now we just got to do some cleaning up here. And then we should be pretty much good to go. Unfortunately, a minor setback has occurred. Our right, trigger has broken cleanly right off of where it's supposed to be. But I believe I can fix that. So I've basically drawn up a beefier trigger, which is basically going to do the same thing, except it's going to be a lot thicker at this point where it broke last time. So I finished cutting up this trigger shape. Now that's all that's going to happen is I've also sanded it down quite a bit uh, width-wise, so it's able to slip in and out really easily. Uh, but basically, you just line up the holes, take a pin, drop it in, into its place, there you go. And now, it's a working trigger. So we've, we've now finished making this groove. It goes all the way down to the top of the body of the crossbow. And you can see that the arrow fits in quite nice. That'll be the exit path. So now for pretty much the last step, I've taken off the trigger because we're going to be spray painting now. But before that, we're going to have to find our way to connect our PVC to the front and keep it there. And I do not want to drill a hole and put a screw because that's going to weaken the PVC at that point. What I'm going to do. I'm going to take my drill and I'm going to drill a hole through the body of the crossbow right here so that when we put the PVC pipe on, we can just tie it down through that hole. And that'll be the way we will keep it on. So I'm just going to mark the center. I do want to keep some of the wood look on this channel right here, and I also feel that the paint could affect the smoothness of the wood on wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some regular masking tape, and I'm going to run it down the channel. Pretty much it guys thanks for watching this episode go ahead and click to the next episode to watch me finish off this bad boy thanks for watching warrior zorno out